Hello everyone, welcome to the Self-Knowledge Lectures. Today Hello, we have the lecture number 33 uh, of the phase A and you know that we are seeing the phase A lectures every Wednesday and Friday and uh, today we are going to see this very very interesting topic which is the number 33 of the set of 50 lectures that are the first part or the phase A of this course and you know that the purpose of this course is that we have all the necessary tools to get to awaken our consciousness and to get to really know ourselves to achieve the self-realization of our being um, we are going to be delving into this interesting topic we are going to be learning about these two laws of force which are the laws of the law of um, the law of octaves and the law of entropy if you have any question about this topic feel free to leave your questions there in the chat and at the end of the explanation i will be solving any question that you have or if you will see this lecture after the live ends what you can also leave your questions and i will be solving your questions there in the chat also, if you see this lecture on YouTube, you can also leave your questions, okay? So, um, let's see what is the objective of today's lectures. And, well, the objective of studying this topic is for us to know how these two laws of force work, how they uh, subdue us, and how by knowing them, we can use them to ascend through uh, the wise use of the musical octaves in, yeah, in our lives. We can ascend in our levels of consciousness and through combating the law of entropy, that is the law that always seeks to make us equal to the rest of, uh, to the environment, you know, so that with this knowledge, we, yeah, we can prevent ourselves from descending on our path towards the intimate self-realization of our being so we are going to start by explaining a little about uh, what the law of octave is um, the law of musical octaves is also known as the sound current or current of sound uh, or the current of life since we will see that just as the musical notes always ascend from lower tones to higher uh, tones, ascending in vibratory levels, uh, each um, um, higher, you know, going from a lower octave to a lower, um, to a higher one, uh, they go from lower vibratory levels to higher uh, vibratory levels in those higher octaves. Um, the same with the levels of consciousness. So uh, the law of octaves teaches us to ascend. It allows us to see where we are stuck, why we are stuck in our progress, and how to continue ascending until we reach uh, our final goal, which is the self-realization of a being. If we observe uh, the musical scale, we will see that the seven musical notes, as you can see here, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, that they correspond to a musical octave, we will see that to go from a lower do to a higher do, it is necessary to rise one more octave. So it is necessary to pass a whole set of seven notes. But it is interesting to observe how all of us human beings and all of our processes and all of our projects are subject to this same vibratory scale which is the current of life at the same time that we are subdued to it we are going to see that just as when we begin to sing musical note and we sing the do re mi when we reach the mi we find a first like breathing pause between the notes mi and fa and then following uh, the following three notes, Fa, Sol, La, they go together. But when we reach La, we find a second pause between La and T. And then moving to the T note, we see that the, it is independent and that to move 
to it to the higher do, we found the third pass between the T and the do that belongs to the uh, higher octave. Actually, you can like understand them be understand this better if we know if we have any knowledge about um, music. If you have learned to play any uh, instrument, if you know a little about this, you can you you already know that these uh, these pauses already exist in this uh, in a musical octave. And we will see that we are going to find those same three pauses whenever we push ourselves to take anything in our lives, anything from a lower level to a higher level, in any aspect in our life that we want to undertake and uh, that we want to take it to a higher level, we are going to have to break with those pauses and those impulses that are going to lead us to start and that are going to allow us to break with those pauses is what we will call a shock okay so to illustrate this we can, i can give you an example of any company or any business that we decide to undertake we will need a a boost which is an encouragement an investment to start up the business that will be our first shock that is the one that is going to make us start with that okay but always and inevitably we are going to find that after starting after buying the equipment after buying the raw material after finding the workers etc there will be a process of stagnation like a pause maybe in the uh, difficulty of opening up a field in the market for example and if the company doesn't give itself that impulse or that second shock that may imply making a new investment for example or an effort in searching the right relationships or making an effort to find or to reach clients etc that progress could be stalled and gradually lose the strength and return to the point from which it departed you know but on the other hand if the company owners give themselves that impulse the shock then they would rise to another point on that scale in which they would begin to produce, begin to generate uh, profits, etc. But they will also reach a certain point where they will face new difficulties that could lead them to stagnation and setbacks, such as uh, the competition that they find in the market, for example, the rising of costs of the raw material, etc. And again, in order to continue ascending, they will be faced with the need to give that other shock, uh, the, that other impulse to that business, for example. And uh, until they can like take that business to an a stable level, which is to a higher octave. But really, um, you can see this process here I'm illustrating illustrating you this uh, in the business but you can see this in anything that you undertake you can see that for example in a couple's relationship any couple's relationship that we start if we analyze it we are going to see those three pauses gradually and inevitably of course and that the majority of relationships which are the ones that fail, you know, the, they break in on one of these pauses and they are carved by the law of entropy, which we, we, that I'm going to talk about later. So we'll see that uh, low oct the, the law of octaves, sorry, in everything um, is moved at a micro level but we can also see it in a macro level in relation to our own very existence and uh, around um, in relation to the very purpose of our existence which is to achieve the self-realization of the being there we are going to see how this law of octaves is being moved in our entire lives so in us that first shock of course at birth when uh, the baby inhales the first breath which is when the spark uh, definitely enters the new body um, although it has been connected to the body through the cerebral cord during the nine months of pregnancy 
actually the entrance of the essence of course with that first breath of life and with that shock we are entitled to the first three musical notes which are do re and mi and these notes in us are equivalent to the physical body which is the note do the vital body which is the note re and the soul principle that we all have where 97% of our essence is there trapped in the ego, which is the note uh, me. Uh, rem uh, and it's, it is the ego, it is the, the myself. Um, accompanied by a personality which we, uh, with which we are going to develop in this physical world. And well, these three notes are the ones that we are like aimed to, and, uh, I mean, the, the ones that we already have just by being born just with that first shock and with these three notes we grow we reproduce we achieve material or personal success uh, we grow old and uh, we die without any real objective each existence actually could represent an opportunity to continue ascending the ladder or to on the contrary return to the starting point and this is the most common that we spend a lifetime without even without ever uh, finding the purpose of our lives and that by law of entropy we all end up matched in the cemetery um, having to return again and again in different physical bodies leaving these three notes uh, and growing old uh, without finding that that will give us the shock to continue ascending and uh, we return again and again until we exhaust the 108 opportunities with human physical body that we have for each cycle of manifestation well actually the vast majority of humanity never manages to transcend that first pass they remain engrossed in the meaningless search for pleasure and successes and in trying to flee from pain and adversity and well these are these kind of people that we are all are are the so-called men of the third day fascinated and mesmerized with life without even knowing the reason for their existence and well actually to transcend that first uh, that first pause we need to receive that which will give us the second shock, that impulse to break that pause and continue moving up that ladder, uh, that ladder of the musical notes. And we have the possibility of giving ourselves that second shock when we receive the objective knowledge. There we will discover that our existence has a much greater purpose than what we had seen until now. Once we receive the knowledge of the three factors for the revolution of the consciousness that are, you know, psychological death, which is self-observation of all of our psychological defects where our soul is trapped, um, the raw material to start creating the existential bodies of the being, then prosecuting each of them, asking for death through our Divine Mother, um, for any um, psychological defect, that is the psychological death, and we can practice it uh, from moment to moment and through the reflective meditation. And also practicing the spiritual birth, which is making a wise use of our sexual creative energy to merge those released essences in our spine for the process of internal creation of our different bodies to occur. And by practicing the sacrifice for humanity, uh, which is to awaken conscious love in, uh, in each of those essences so that they serve the purpose of the being. And you know that we practice sacrifice for humanity when we reach to others the knowledge of the three factors uh, for free and yeah, selflessly. And once we receive this knowledge, and there are actually really few who among so many theories and schools of a pseudo-esoteric type that exists, manage to find a pure knowledge. That is why that uh, phrase that says, 
out of a thousand who seek me, one finds me. But if we are that one of a thousand who find it, at that moment, uh, when we receive that uh, knowledge, two paths are open to us. Some will receive this knowledge and will take the path of the believer. So they will have it as some one more theory. They will not practice it. And uh, therefore, they will not use it uh, as that impulse or shock to start or to continue ascending in the following notes. And well, that phrase that also says that out of a thousand who find me, one follows me, is fulfilled there. When you use that uh, knowledge, you start practicing it and you, uh, you give yourself or this knowledge gives, gives you that shock, that impulse. And actually, there are really very few who begin to practice and then receive the shock and begin to practice the super sex to create themselves internally. Uh, so, if you are one, you, if you are the one that start practicing and starts uh, creating yourself internally, then you are going to start ascending through the notes Fa, Sol, and La. And those notes correspond to the uh, creation of the astral body, mental body, and causal bodies. Those three bodies are there. And uh, by doing so, you are going to become a true man with a real internal constitution. This person who do so are uh, create a human soul and become the so-called uh, man of the sixth day, man made in the image and likeness of God by carrying out that process which is internally called Genesis uh, or the creations of, uh, uh, from the waters, which is the first mountain of the initiation that is the creation of the solar bodies. Um, Phys uh, physical solar body, um, vital, astral, mental, and causal solar bodies, okay? And well, however, at this point, the second pause of course, when creating your causal body, uh, um, there you're going to find your second pause in the, in the path towards self-realization, okay? Uh, and the first part of this work is... Um, barely begin completed. But when we begin the process of creating the causal body, we are going to be presented with the proof of the choice of the path. And here we will have to choose between the path of Nirvana, which is a very tempting path where we will receive like all the rewards for the hard work done up to that point. And we will have the right to live for perhaps hundreds or thousands of years in the uh, paradises of nirvana but having a barely reached the level of men having uh, to sooner or later return to the will of samsara to try to start the path again and uh, waiting for that time to finish it and well yeah, at that point if you choose nirvana you betray your intimate christ uh, since only by taking the direct path which is the other path uh, that force called the Christ can be born in us. And that, uh, um, that is the force that will turn us from being a man into being a superman or a resurrected master. And well, at that point, when you are in Fa, um, approximately 70% of consciousness has been rescued. Almost all of our visible moon has been cleaned However, we, is, we still have alive all the defects related to our invisible moon and we have alive all the causal cells or the seven seeds of the ego as only the Christ in the work of the second mountain of the initiation can do the work of eliminating those um, causal selves and those uh, defects of the invisible moon in the infra dimensions of the planet earth and they're liberating the totality of our consciousness unfortunately the vast majority take the path of nirvana it is said that out of a thousand people who reach that point 
999 choose the path of nirvana and with that fulfilling the third part of that phrase that concludes by saying uh, out of a thousand who follow me only one is mine and those who on the contrary choose at that point to do the will of the father and well choosing the direct path will have the right to unite with their divine soul remember that here is the seat of our causal body and here is the seat of our buddhic body which is our divine soul and by choosing the direct path is going to we are going to reach the union between the human and the divine and that union is known as the perfect matrimony and well the human soul um, is represented by a triangle that goes up and the divine soul is represented by a triangle that goes down that is like a triangle and well when they are united that form that six-pointed star of or um the star of david which is the star that announces the birth of the christ since it is actually from the union uh, of the human with uh, with the human and the divine that the Christ force will the Christ force will be born in us and uh, that uh, Christic force or Christ is uh, represented by our atmic body just at that point and well the third shock because here you need like a, um, a shock to to overcome the second pass that third shock is then represented by choosing the direct path and um, living the birth, the Christmas of the heart, of the heart, which is the birth of your intimate Christ. The Christ is that ignis force um, in us that will guide us and will do in us all the work of the second mountain which is also known as the mountain of the apocalypse or of the end by fire of all the subhuman elements that we have inside us that are, are that is our ego and with this shock we then overcome that second pass and we are entitled to the musical note t and uh, well the musical note t actually is the work of the second mountain and there those bodies or solar vehicles that we created in the first mountain are going to be transformed into vehicles of pure gold so that this Christic force can incarnate in man and it is um, uh, in the second mountain where the entire process of the descent of the Christ to hell or to the infra dimensions of planet earth will take place to completely eliminate even the last shadow of ego to eliminate the seeds of ego that are the seven causal selves thus purifying ourselves completely well as i was saying apocalypse means end by fire and it refers to that moment in which our intimate christ who as we were um, uh, teaching in the lecture number 28 represents the fire in us and this force will do the total work I mean the, yeah the total work of psychological death the process of elimination of all of the causal selves and we will comprise that third and last pass that we will find on our path towards self-realization that pause is going to be the uh, the how can i say the the process of the elimination of the seven causal cells and to overcome that third pass and uh, conquer that higher job uh, a fourth shock will need to be given which will occur at the moment in which the process of elimination of the causal cells is completed which is called dying in oneself and when the resurrection as a new man without a trace of ego occurs and with this you are going to be culminating the work of the second mountain and 
beginning the work of the third mountain, which is the mountain of sacrifice for humanity, and in that, the master will have to find a disciple to leave him in charge of the world teaching, since there must always um, someone master in charge of teaching knowledge on the planet, and also he must turn those bodies of gold in the third mountain into bodies of light. And, and there, the second birth can take place, where it is born now in the it is born now um, in the spiritual world, and there he unites with his own being and becomes an absolute man. So when the person uh, actually manages to advance from this lower dough to this higher uh, dough by making this whole work with these uh, three pauses, transcending them, working the first mountain, the second, and the third, it is said that he has been born for the second time. The second birth would be uh, to become resurrected, to be born in the spiritual world, uh, to become an uh, in, immortal being. And well, this alternative, this whole process that we are explaining here, and that we are teaching in this whole self-knowledge course, is actually open to all human beings, but it is absolutely necessary to know how to do the work and to know how to apply the three factors for the revolution of the consciousness, to know how to be born uh, by creating your existential bodies and by doing the first mountain, which is um, the, the mountain if, in which you are going to recover your waters and make the whole genesis, which is the creation in seven days. Uh, seven days are actually seven levels of consciousness and refer to those seven solar bodies. And you need to know how to die in, one, in, your, in yourself. You need to know how to eliminate your psychological defects, to rescue the essences that are trapped in the ego, and to your second mountain, which is uh, to achieve the total elimination of your defects by during the apocalypse or the end by fire. And by sacrificing yourself for humanity, which is sharing this knowledge with all humanity, and also doing your third mountain to get a disciple to leave that person in charge of the um, world teaching, okay? So that is actually the process that we need to go through to achieve the self-realization of our being. Then uh, we saw how this law of octaves is what is going to lead us to achieve uh, that like macro purpose of our existence. However, we must learn to observe how this law of uh, how this same law is processed in our daily lives, since in the different um, trials that we face daily, and that are the ones that give us daily progress in our work, we are also going to find those same three pauses that we have to transcend. So in a micro level, in our day by day, we are going to find this process and we are going to need to overcome them by giving us uh, conscious tracks. Uh, for example, we intend to do this work and we begin to create a continuity of purposes in relation to a practice. For example, we decide to dedicate a daily amount of time to the study of one um, psychological defect through reflective meditation. But we are going to see how we are going to find some resistance. How this resistance is going to start appearing immediately due to the law of entropy, in which our defects is going to put us in that, you know, ill will because they don't want us, they don't want us to advance in this way. And we will see how situations are going to happen. Uh, confusion, doubt, ill will, laziness, and we will have to give ourselves those conscious shocks to gain impulse and to overcome those pauses that we are going to be facing. We are going to start feeling the desire to stop meditating. 
stop doing that work stop stop working the psychological death we are going to start feeling that and we we need to practice psychological death and uh, give us uh, ourselves that second uh that that you know second shock because the first one was to start doing it then we are going to start maybe the next day or the very same day uh to have a lot of justifications why not to go and meditate no better uh we'll uh, go and i don't know go out with my friends or watch a new series or whatever we are going to have a lot of justifications there we are going to experience that ill will that um that thing that is trying to make us down to make us stop doing make us go back in our intentions to um advance in our in the elimination of that psychological defect there we practice the psychological death and we give us ourselves that second shock uh, that well in this case a third shock and we go ahead and you are going to like start feeling like a, something like oppression something like very hard that wants to make you stop doing so and if you manage to continue practicing this practicing the psychological death and give yourself that third um well that is the fourth that fourth shock to transcend that third pass, you are going to see how you are going to uh, start uh, finding this more ease. You are going to start liking meditating every day. You are going to start enjoying find details of that defect, eliminating it. You are going to need every day go and meditate because now you have an stability on that practices because you have achieved um take that practice from that lower dull to that other octave to the higher dull and that is a purpose that is a process sorry that we are going to live with anything that we want to undertake with anything with any step that we want to go through to advance in our inner work and when we manage to overcome all the passes we will have a great strength to carry out the practice every day and to have a continuity of purposes, okay? And well, now we are going to see that is the law of octaves. Let's see the other law, which is the law of entropy. This law is also called the equalization law. Um, everything in this physical world is up to is actually subject to this law. We see, for example, that if we put a pot full of uh, hot water next to another full of cold water, we see how the entropy precipitates. There is like an exchange of heat and cold, and finally both remain the same. And we see how if we put a rotten fruit among a group of fresh fruits, by entropy in a very short time, all the fresh fruits end up rotting, matching like the damaged one. And that is what this law does in this, well, it's another of the 48 laws of, in this physical world. This law always tends to match us to the lowest, to take us to the lowest possible vibratory level. But we must know that this law actually fulfills a very important function and that function is that we have the necessary resistance to develop force we see for example that a person who wants to develop physical strength uh, needs certain elements needs uh, weights that represent that resistance that will lead him to develop those muscles that strength that he requires but it happens that uh, well, it happens the same when we want to um, develop a spirituality, when we want um, uh, to develop strength in our spiritual part, aspect. We will need some resistance to overcome so we can generate that force. But what happens is that nobody knows actually how to use this law consciously. People usually give up at the first resistance that they find uh, and with um, 
actually we like the is and uh, actually the easier thing is always to descend we know that to descend is like going through a, a slide but to go up is going through a ladder you know and what millions of people are stuck on the path of entropy since they don't work on themselves they become more and more degenerate their minds get atrophy their energy centers are increasingly unbalanced and they are increasingly subject to vices, to materialism, to pornography, to violence, etc. And we can observe how that law is actually processed in us when we uh, thoughtlessly want to do what everyone does, what is popular. So we are looking to see which is the most popular theory or we fall into that incessant search for pleasure and money as everyone else is. We can see how we fall into entropy when we, for example, have to find a cop, uh, um, 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 I mean, some friends that are there talking and you see that they are actually gossiping about someone else. And uh, what you do, you, you have immediately that desire to go and know and start gossiping also. That is the law of entropy. That is how it takes, it, 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 this desire in you take, takes you uh, all the time to make you equal to the rest of humanity. Uh, we can see the same if we, for example, arrive home and we are going, you know, in a good mood and we find that there is a fight between our relatives and that immediately irritates us and we end up annoyed and furious and we fail to observe how there the law of entropy made us equal to that environment and that happens to us like at all at all times and the problem with getting into entropy is that we lose the octave we lose the impulse that we have to move forward and driven by this law we all end up the same reaching the end of our lives without having undergone a process of liberation and awakening of our consciousness and no matter if we manage to accumulate a lot of fame or wealth and when we die they bury us in a golden coffin for example it doesn't matter if we die poor and we are buried in a simple wooden box as you can see here we'll end up just as bunny as the other so because the law of entropy immolate us all in uh, tartars that is in in the cemetery so all things are actually marked under this law of entropy it is actually found in everything we see the seas turned into garbage dumps uh, the polluted rivers the dying fish the atmosphere how it, how it is polluted by smog uh, we see the adulterated fruits, uh, plants, vegetables, and that is the law of entropy. And all of humanity is going down that path. So, the important thing, how are we going to avoid further falling into entropy? How are we going to overcome this constant resistance and advance our levels of inner work in higher octaves? Well actually only through transformation it is possible to overcome entropy and we achieve transformation when we are willing to sacrifice ourselves to sacrifice our egoic desires that are the ones that always put us in entropy uh, when we are able to observe what is the acting defect that wants to lead you to lose strength to make mistakes, be it laziness, greed, lust, anger, envy, whatever it is. And we eliminate it. And um, as we saw in the lecture in which we talk about the radical change, which, which was a previous one, we decide to never feed it anymore. If we sacrifice that desire, if we refuse to feed the ego, then the result is transformation. The result is freedom. A strength, our strength is currently trapped in desire. And when we deny ourselves, when we sacrifice the desire that we are feeling, 
the desire to stop doing the things of the consciousness or the desire to do the things of the ego, then when we do so, we recover the strength to continue advancing. And the result of sacrifice of all of our psychological defects will always be the development in us of the virtue that is contrary to that defect. If one sacrifices anger, well, the precious gem of uh, patience, of gentleness appears. If one sacrifices uh, the desire for money, the greed, well, their altruism will be born in, in, in ourselves. If we sacrifice envy, then uh, the philanthropy, the, that philanthropic energy will start manifesting in us. Also, will manifest the desire for uh, to work for one's neighbor, uh, to for the for the good of others. You know, finding joy, finding sorry joy in um, in working for the good of others. So there cannot be transformation without sacrifice. This is something that we must know. And likewise, for the man who sacrifices his sexual impulses, the ones that leave them all the time to fornicate their sexual energy, to reach orgasm and ejaculation in the sexual practice, if they learn to sacrifice these sexual impulses, well, the result of that energy is the creation of the existential bodies of the being. If the eyes, the selves, the egos are sacrificed, if they are all destroyed, the result of that sacrifice will be energy released, which will give rise to the inner man. So one escapes from the degenerating entropy. But it happens that people don't really want to sacrifice. We don't really understand what sacrifice is. And we must begin by sacrificing our feelings. One discover that of all the things to which we are attached to, the ones that we are most attached to is, the, is to the things that hurt us. It hurts us to let go our sufferings. We are so attached to our sufferings. People are willing to sacrifice their pleasures with this, even their vices, even their money. They would sacrifice everything, but not their suffering and pains because we love our sufferings so much. We need to make ourselves aware of that. And suffering is that strong resistance that always lead us to lose any strength. Any strength with which we propose to advance in any aspect. As soon as something bad is going on, as soon as we start feeling like depressed or sad, we send everything to hell and we just are there in our suffering, talking about we, how we are so, I don't know, um, bad paid or whatever we are all the time there feeding our, our our sufferings if it is just observing ourselves when we are in a state of melancholy of sadness depression anguish resentment or anger uh, how we gloat in that state how we search our minds for more justifications and for more excuses to continue feeding those selves you know to continue feeding those feelings within us that lower us to the lowest vibratory levels and make us lose all the courage and all the strength to awaken our consciousness. So if we start by sacrificing our feelings, by sacrificing our sufferings, we can take a big step to overcome the law of entropy. For this, we must not admit suffering. We must never think about suffering. When one sacrifices, uh, when we sacrifice our sufferings, when we eradicate from ourselves the selves, the egos that produce those sufferings, and the sufferings remain sacrificed, then the psychological defect of suffering must be or can be eradicated. That energy that results 
from there is transformation because a different man is born who uh, can overcome that law of entropy and well finally i want to mention that in relation to sacrifices and well and how they serve as an impetus to move forward we must bear in mind that when we sacrifice ourselves for others when we help others so that they can also you know awaken their consciousness that they can also transform themselves so that they can also advance spiritually we receive in return a lot of strength to be able to advance in our inner work so something that you are going to experience is that if, that if you are going through a process of crisis if you are finding like a lot of resistance to continue advancing in your inner work if you make an effort to uh, reach this knowledge to, an, to, to another one to um, teach another one how to go out from their inner um, wrong states you give the, the, that person I don't know an invitation to the lectures or you talk to someone to what you are learning what to, um, about what you are experiencing the practices that you are carrying out etc you are going to see how that will pay back with a lot of strength to go out from that crisis from that uh, process of resistance okay so uh, it's important to know that about the sacrifice for humanity and well remember that there cannot there can be no transformation without sacrifice that is like the important thing and well actually this was today's topic these are the two laws uh, I want to thank you to all of you who uh, see the video um, I hope that it uh, helped you to learn how to develop the strength to do your inner work and remember that if you have any question I am always available here to help you with any concern that you have and I want to invite you as always to the next lecture that we are going to be starting next week on Wednesday and is the permanent center of gravity and uh, that conference is actually like, it's actually like a complement to this one since in this one we saw how to develop strength for inner work and in the next one in the permanent center of gravity we are going to learn how to achieve a continuity of purposes so that we can dedicate our entire existence to the inner work by achieving that permanent center of gravity around our consciousness and well not being more have a, have a, a happy rest of the day and well see you the next time ciao ciao